Yeah. So how, how was childhood, guys? <laughs> wow, just to rip the band-aid <laughs> off. I'm just going to say, like, pre-warning, this is probably not going to be an easy podcast. No, that's no, going to be tough. It's definitely graphic, too. So if people, there's yeah. going to be trigger warnings for sure. Trigger warnings, yeah. yeah, all over this shit. Yeah, a little bit. So you came over from Albania when you were two. Jalen was one. Mm-hmm. Jalen was one. What was the youngest age you can remember? And what what did it look like in your household? Sorry, baby. I don't rem honestly like I I only remember bits and pieces of my like really I remember kindergarten a little bit. Yeah. You literally blocked it all out yes. from dissociating. Okay, beatings. so what did it look like though? And when that happened, like how did you react to those sorts of things? Oh, we were scared. We were terrified. Mm-hmm. I and remember crying a yeah, lot we would cry because a lot. it would happen right in front of us. Like there was no hiding it it was right in front of our face your dad would beat your mom yeah yeah Yeah. i mean we would we would get hit hit too you being the oldest Mm -hmm. took the not the brunt of it but like you we were kind of you played the protector role for your siblings well i played the protector role i played the watching them role like i was like responsible for them not just for them though but for your mom in high school is when i started to like get involved in like like stop my father you would fight him <laughs> not fight him but like yell at him and like get in between stand up to him yeah at, so at one point i even got swung at for being involved you know and like my nose started bleeding he, he punched you in the face i don't know if he punched me or he just like mm. he tried to like, try to move her away move me away that fight was so big um that my dad left the house. My nose started bleeding. He must have felt some type of way. I don't know what the fight was even about. It's all, it was always, it was about always st- bullshit. Stu- there stupid was shit. No reason Money. For like, cheating. Yeah. Stuff like that. So when it comes to like the way you were brought up and how you viewed like what love looked like in the house, you know, like how the how marriage was supposed to look. Do you feel like that really molded who you became as an adult? Oh my god, yeah. I mean, I thought for a very long time love was that and you like explosive yeah you, that love was just did you feel the same way i would say yeah not that it, the explode but i thought okay you know we were always trained you respect your husband you whatever he says goes you don't make a peep so in a sense like that's how you grew up and you thought okay you know what your husband says no it's no you 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 can't wear this you can't do that you can't go here you respect it that's what you were taught and so that's what you guys watched your mom do i mean she's tried to like put her two cents if she put her two cents she got you know and we used to tell my mom like i'm like mom just please stop talking talking. just don't because it was like no winning and and my dad had so my dad has such anger issues i mean i can talk about even recent like yeah. It's there. My dad has that really bad anger issue and it's always affected us in our in our life. Like my dad's never known how to show us love. And the only time my dad showed love, his love language was just buying shit. Right. Money. And I, like, that so was no a one, common thing in yeah. our house. Like when after he'd beat like my mom, he'd go and buy her jewelry later mm. yeah. to say sorry. And then my mom, because we needed the money for rent, would go and return it and get the money back. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, really? Mm-hmm. It yeah. would be like a constant um, toxic cycle of that. Now, okay, how often would he touch your mom? I mean, it felt it felt very much often. All the time, yeah. It, it, and, it, it, what ever, felt like, just, what, ever. three times a week, four times a mm-hmm. week? I mean, I can remember, like, I want, like, it would... The worst one I could ever remember was when he dragged my mom by her hair down the stairs after like throwing a remote control at her face. And like, I've even seen him throw a glass ashtray at her head, dragged her down the stairs, threw her outside in the cold. He would be like, don't, you, you guys are, don't open, don't the, open door. the door. And we would stand and we would cry crying for her. My dad would go to sleep. I remember I would tiptoe to the back deck and then climb not down the stairs because I didn't want him to hear any like footsteps. So I would go on the side. There was a little roof to like, like the boiler roof. And I would just jump there and then um, go down. She would be like, no, go back inside before you get in trouble. Like that kind of like really resonates because 
for instance, the the takeaway for Jalon was so different than yours. So I was you read my mind. <laughs> I was just going to say that was so different. It's like she took on the role of her mom, and Rhea took the anger from her father. Yeah, mm-hmm. because she was the protector, so she took on all of that like anxiety and pressure and ang- yes. anger. Yeah, and Jalon just took on the role of like how her mom behaved. I yeah. think it's fascinating how different their perspectives are. They lived in the same household. And like they played two completely different roles. Yeah. Like what? What do? You, what would you say was your role specifically? I didn't have a role. Like my role was literally all I would do is cry. Rhea was always trying to protect us. She was trying to keep us. Like I remember, she would push us in the room mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we. I would just stand there and cry and see my. Like I would be frozen. Like. Yeah. And I was so afraid to say anything to my dad. She was so fearless. Like she used to just jump right in and try to stop it as a little kid and it like fearless and I would be so grateful to have her because I'm like somebody saved my mom like that's yeah. all I kept thinking somebody saved her because I can't do it so that goes back to how your trauma carried over as an adult because mm-hmm. you were so afraid to speak up for yourself right. and you were taught that that this is what you do you just don't speak up exactly right. you stay silent mm-hmm. well Jaylon I mean that's just shows our difference of how we took the trauma on you are very much more you freeze Mm -hmm. and you're you're petrified when you're in those situations yeah i don't you don't i'm not afraid like i'm ready to like attack i will your fight she's flight yeah Yeah. but also jaylon had you as a protector in the home and once she was gone she didn't have anyone protecting her anymore Mm -mm. she was on her own you know yeah i think that's when our, our life like the decision she made after i was forced in the marriage would and like why she made the decision she made was because of that like i was gone and how old for, were you when you were forced into marriage i got engaged 18 okay now you were forced into the marriage because your parents knew you were gay that, that's part of it yes but it's also my mom and my dad are in arranged marriage as well yeah my grandparents arranged marriage it's mm-hmm. like a, a, it's a generational like trauma trauma thing my mom was so bent thinking that like because I was a tomboy and I I always wanted to play with the boys and I like she she just knew as a parent you don't you have no safe space so you don't create a safe space for your child to come talk to you so instead they didn't no never (laughs) I never we never never had a safe space didn't want to believe it so even if they knew that you were they didn't want to believe it yes not only did they not want to believe it what else did they do to you they took me to imams thinking that they could fix me and stuff like that so but i had no idea that's what they were doing right mm-hmm. they made me feel like there was like a demon inside a de- of you. not I, I, something i don't know like there was, was something fucking something like wrong it's, with it's you. for no. it's good for you like they would never explain so i just did it i'm like okay it's part of our religion okay i'll d-. in reality after my mom confessed everything and she was like yeah i always knew you were gay that's why i did it and then i put all of it together mm-hmm. and i'm like that's what you've been Ooh, doing okay. the funny thing is is y'all were both gay and didn't you guys like come out to each oh, other yeah, on the same day? We did that's come out hilarious. to each other. That's, that's so like cute. the cutest a story funny ever. Story. But our parents, they wouldn't let us have like guys as friends. I'm like, okay, well, fine. I, you know what? I'm going to get a, a girlfriend. That's how it ended. It. And then I had no idea. Yeah. And about then I her. was seeing someone in high school, my first girlfriend, and I just was like, oh my God, how am I going to? tell this to my sister meanwhile she was doing her own thing and i was over here doing my own thing <laughs> and it was hilarious so we were but in did you hear our room. rumors did you hear no like- i didn't hear anything from you and i was afraid you were going to hear something from me because we were in high school together we were eventually <laughs> somebody's going to find out yeah. something and then we were in our room and i'm like okay i, I shut the door and i'm like i gotta talk to you and Rio <laughs> goes and she's on the phone with her girlfriend at the time and she's like okay let me let me call her back and I'm going to talk to you. And I was like, <laughs> OK, like what's about to happen? So she hangs up the phone and she's like, let me go first because I really got to talk to you first. And I was like, OK. And she's like, I'm dating a girl. I'm, I, I'm gay. Like she just comes out and tells me and I'm like, oh, thank God. Me too. <laughs> 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 I'm literally going through it together and that's how we came out to each other because that's I was so like, cute you were you adorable. said you were bisexual at the time that's i was didn't, yeah you didn't know anything didn't about know pansexual anything about like pansexual, pansexual. Yeah. i just was like i like guys and i like girls mm-hmm. and i'm i don't know and that's yeah. how it came out it was but i came out as completely like i yes, told you, you i was like i only are, like gr- i only like girls 
Cause, yeah. Because then after that, we started talking, and then you were like, you're like, I'm so happy I have you to talk to. I was so afraid you were oh, going to be mad my, at me. No, and I'm no, like, no. I, actually, I was just, I didn't know if you were going to judge me. But I yeah. also felt, it's so weird because I also felt very safe with you. But that judgment was because, like, I held on to that from our parents. Right. So I didn't know if you would be the same way. You were always the person that, like, I could come and tell something to. Yeah, same. My sister would never rat me out and do something. Well, me, I was like, either she's going to accept her or she's going to beat the shit out of me. I don't no. know. It's going to be one or the other. Because you remember as kids, we always fought a lot. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get my ass whooped. But you know what? I got to tell her because I'm dating this girl and it's going to get around. Like, <laughs> no, I don't care. I would have been. I, I would have been. If anything, if I wasn't gay, I would have been so petrified for you. I would have been so petrified because you would wear freaking hoop earrings and purse and like if you even got caught like mm -hmm. we would you would have to hide so Jalen was so out like she yeah, didn't care i didn't care she was just like i'm gonna i'm free like i'm doing whatever i want to do <laughs> I like didn't i didn't care, care. I caught. I that's like, the okay. crazy part though right it's yo crazy my part. sister and i was the very she much she was the one who was afraid it. i was petrified to even i was so envious of her but then i'm like please stop because you're gonna get us in trouble maybe the thought the reason why I was so free was because you were my protector. Yeah. yeah. It makes you, sense. You, you it just knew you hit had me her. Now. Yeah. Like I knew I had you. So I was like, screw but it. My that's why my it was different. Cause I, I was like, what the fuck? Like I've, I've had to protect mom and everybody else. I'm like, mm -hmm. please don't add this to my plate. Like yeah. I was well, very much like, right. in a way, Jalen lived like a very carefree life. I loved that for because her, but I was scared you for took her. on the brunt of yeah. everything to keep her feeling carefree. Right. Yeah. You kept her feeling that way. Yeah. And I think that that caused a lot of your like tension in your relationship as she stayed with a man because you knew how unhappy she was and you were yeah. like i've always protected you and you, you you like now that i'm telling you to get out of it you know like that caused a lot of tension in your relationship right like i did all this work yeah. for nothing yeah but going backwards jaylon was the one who was open and out but then closeted again yeah and hit it for well, yeah i mean once you got married yeah, once i got engaged it's, it's like, like it was not a thing anymore never existed like you didn't even talk out. about it and neither did i i never i never like even made that a conversation because i never wanted to make her uncomfortable or yeah. right and then i was like maybe she just maybe for her it was just like a little a phase, phase. i don't know yeah. i didn't know so i'd never i was like Question if she it. ever wanted to talk to me she knew excuse me <laughs> if she ever wanted to talk to me she knew that i was there so yeah. she never did she knew i was also gay at one point she never ever brought that up ever again so i'm like okay yeah like i so, didn't yeah. question her so when you got engaged how soon after was it that jaylon got engaged jesus i it's not about when i i got i was on my honeymoon oh you were on your honeymoon literally on my honeymoon and i i'm on my way for my honeymoon and my mom calls me and tells me my sister got engaged and I was so pissed. I'm like, why would you do that? I'm like, why would you do that? She's still young. I was like, why? You just married me. I was like, why would you do that to your daughter? She's like, because she really wanted to really bad. I couldn't control her. I was like, I don't care. You're her fucking mom. Like, yeah, do and something. And I was like, why didn't you wait for me to be there? Why would you do something like this while I was gone? Yeah. Because I, if well, I was there. Let's go back because let's start where, okay, I got engaged at 17. And it wasn't, I wasn't forced. It wasn't like your situation. My situation was more like, I want to get married. Get me out. I yeah. want to get. You would get out of the house. Because I you wanted don't have to that be, protection. Anymore. Right. I, I didn't have that protection. I wanted the free life. So I'd be married to somebody and have the, we get to go out wherever we want. Yeah. We get to, I get to be where and do whatever I want because I'm with my husband. Like it should be free. Yeah. Like thinking like that. Yeah. But I think it was it definitely wasn't. more psychological thinking like, okay, well, she's going to be out of the house now and mm -hmm. I'm going to have to put up with all this on my own. Now I'm going to have to take the brunt. I'm going to have to take the brunt of it. So it may, you may not have even thought about it that way, but in a way you were trying to save yourself from what was going on there. Yeah. No, no, no. 100%. Trying to escape. Yeah. Yeah. The household. Well, that house literally was like prison. We weren't allowed to do anything. Like I'm telling you, you, you guys can share like your mom lets you hang out with your friends and you went yeah. to parties and you we had none Nothing. of that. Like we our stories of even trying people thought we were weird at school. Yeah. If we had friends, they were just at school. And our friends would ask they us to like couldn't call like, our we house. We were so like, yeah, we were so they weren't allowed to call your house. Mm -mm. No, we no, would get in trouble, get in trouble if they even Why knew. Why are your friends calling here? Like, now, what about crazy. your brother? Was your brother? Oh, he had My freedom. brother had the f freedom 
my brother uh, never so it was a m- woman yeah man thing. yeah yeah men because a no wrong because in our culture if you marry outside the culture if you marry outside the religion like it's blasphemy yeah it's, it's that you're you're like shunned like pretty much like and, and so if you if you even give a hint of like being like a little rebellious they do what they do you know what i mean my mom took me to the freaking imam to get me checked but and also like, they also filled your heads with a lot of like fear fear oh my god bro i've i've lived in fear until my wife has come into my life and like made me face it head on and do the scariest shit and just face it and then i'm like i was scared about nothing literally nothing well that's what i ch- i'm trying to we're dealing with that now yeah like with jaylon you mm-hmm. know like um th- she's got a lot of fear and i try to rationalize and like i can tell she gets she gets triggered mm-hmm. and when she gets triggered she like it's like a k-hole she goes down like this fucking hole mm-hmm. and it's very hard for her to get out of it it's so deep though yeah it's deep because Jalen was like i said she was protected mm-hmm. her whole childhood by Rhea, right and so then she gets out in the real world and she just kind of like sh- she had no protector any longer yeah and so her defense is always to shut down and be fearful and whatever so now she has to do it on her own yeah mm-hmm. now that she's free she has to learn how to protect her own self it's a very very mental it's a very psychological yeah you don't know trusting these herself until someone else points them out either <laughs> mm-hmm. you don't know you're even doing any of that stuff until someone's like you're doing that and you're like you're like Fuck. Fuck. that's why every time <laughs> like, i see a trigger or a trauma <laughs> it's that. always related to something that happened in childhood everything every we do every behavior that we have every personality that we have yeah it all stems from who we were as children how we were raised what we saw what we were told to believe yeah and my mom used to always tell me you're just like your father because of my anger issues like my mom would trigger me all the time she was still saying that when we started dating yeah she told me one time she's like it's okay she's never gonna change she's just like her father but look at you now yeah look at me now but anything that made me angry it, it was for no reason she would say hurtful things she would never like not take any accountability i would never be heard right you know so it was very hard to like feel this hurt and live in the home and just like fucking feel it and not like have any validation no validation ever and it would hurt and i'm like i have to always pretend and like Mm -hmm. make this real why do i always have to keep trying like i'm always the one trying to like keep a relationship i shouldn't have to yeah you know and i my whole entire life i've kept my family together it's always and my parents will tell you different but it i've been the rock in my family like I even know. from childhood yeah, like, it's like your been... parents were so like emotionally stunted that you ended up picking <laughs> up the brunt for everything for everybody yes it was fucking awful but like i don't regret it i definitely don't regret it at all like i'm grateful for everything and i'm, I'm at the point where like i don't care for their validation right. but it takes a while to get there like it takes a while to let go of that yeah you know and but it hurts it fucking hurts and right. you have to feel it. You can't just 100%. like, you can't just like push it down and just not, you know, ignore it. And like, cause that's, that's where my anger would come from because I would constantly push it down. Well, I and think I, the hardest part for the healing was, and I never wanted to be like mean to her, but, and I think our viewers will really relate to this. It's like you had all these things happen, right? And then your brain doesn't know the difference between it happening 20 years ago and today. Mm. so you're basically living in a victim mentality and i don't mean to say that in like a hurtful way in any way but that's what ends up happening it's like well this happened to me so i behaved this way right right, and so your reasoning is something that happened 20 years ago right yeah your brain doesn't know the difference the difference between today and 20 years ago so that was that's why trauma is so hard to rewire and that's true because i used to do that she was in my life and like if i hurt her or something well it's not my fault like I was, I was like, I went through this and somebody hurt me. Like, right. yeah, I'm triggered. Like th- these things are called triggers, but I didn't know they were triggers. Mm, yeah. I was just like, this is my personality. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, well, even Jaylon would do that when, when she first came out of her marriage, she'd be like, guys, you don't understand. Like, I'm scared. You don't understand my fear. And we'd be like, Jaylon, but you're not there anymore. Right. Yeah. I think it's fascinating to see 
how differently you both have processed everything. I mean, like, you guys have the same triggers and stuff like that. You took a different role, and I think Jaylon took another role. Yeah. yeah. 